Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. Uh, this is part two of the Monarch Spindle Removal uh, video. Um, let's get to it. Here I'm cleaning the spindle with what I call a siphon solvent gun. And um, that's basically exactly what it is. As you can see the hose going into the, to the jug there, solvent. And um, as you're blowing air through it, it just creates a vacuum and it sucks the solvent out. And it does a really nice job for uh, cleaning parts outside. Alright, I'm ready to start cleaning the sump out. The uh, This vacuum is designated to nothing but <laughs> sucking junk. And oil, whatever it may be. You can see... The bottom of these monarchs, they don't drain very well. Um, they have little sumps there that that oil does not drain out. Uh, you can see crap that's settled to the bottom. Um, don't want to start blowing that crap around. It's exactly where I want it right now, at the bottom. Once I get the majority of it cleaned up off the bottom, then I'll go with the solvent gun and you know kind of start spraying everything. But right now, I just don't want to spray that stuff all over everything and uh, do more damage than good. Anyway, here we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start blasting it now with the solvent gun. I got most of the crud off the bottom. Now I'll just start rinsing it all down. Anyway, I'm going to be uh, <laughs> right into Solomon, but anyway, it's going to do a great job. Next clip should uh, be nice and super clean. All right, I got all the parts cleaned up. I got the shaft all cleaned up. I got the headstock all cleaned up. Or should I say, as good as I'm going to be able to get it. So it's ready to uh, start getting the fork in and getting the shaft back in. If anybody is interested, I do have a video, a more in-depth video of repairing the shift fork. I don't recommend you... Anybody using their grinders, no guards. If you do, uh, do it your own risk.
Okay, got the fork back in. And Okay, when you're sitting this, setting this bowl gear in, you got this one thrust washer, which you don't want to forget. But you want to make sure that you push the plunger lever, the pump lever right here. What it does is there's a cam. Let's see if I can get it. That shiny spot down in there, kind of a big old cam lobe that works this arm for the pump the oil pump is right underneath this gear where you can't see it now anyway you want to make sure you push that arm to where it gets on top of here and not behind it Alright, we got the shaft started going through. Got it through the gear. There's a thrust washer inside of there. Through this blind collar. Through this gear. Then down here between the bearing, there is another spacer. That's also a thrust that goes between the bearing. It's a thrust that goes between the bearing and this gear. And now we got to take the, this collar, slide it all the way into here. Now we're ready to drop this one in. So I'll just have to break, bring the shaft back just a little bit. Now this is where as soon as I start going through there, as soon as I have access to the key, I need to start putting the Woodrow keys in. So I have to line this keyway up on top. Okay, it's time to put the snap ring back into the shaft. The snap ring groove is right down there hopefully I got the sun right on me but it locks this gear from moving over this way it's the only thing that holds it in place the way these snap rings work they're not your typical snap ring the only other time I've seen them is when I used to uh, oh I worked at a tractor dealership for 20 years and the versatile transmissions used a bunch of these. These will fit inside the groove. This, I don't know if you can tell or not. Then this notch here has to go over, lock into there. And then it'll start closing up. And then when you squeeze these together, this will push over that knob, spring the snap ring, and then pop back into place. And that's the only thing that holds it. And when you go to squeeze this together, this whole half can't move this way because it's bottomed out in the snap ring groove right here. So it's forced to spring it up and over. Let's see if I can get it in there without dropping it in the oil.
I apologize for the wind noise. That was another thing about a lot of this footage. Um, why I didn't want to even do do the video. Um, but it is what it is. Now it's pretty tight corners uh, in there. So the idea is to get both halves started, get the hook on one hooked into the other, and then uh, squeeze it together. And the big channel locks seem to do the trick. And I managed to do it without dropping uh, the rings down into sump uh, at all. Got it. Okay. Now we're just going to verify that that snap in nice. And we're going to rotate around. And that snapped in. Okay. That wasn't too bad. I've showed my some of my mounts before, but I just use my old iPhone 6 on all my videos. And I bent up a piece of a bunch of pieces of aluminum, you know, where the where the phone just kind of sets in there, you know, and hasn't fell out yet. And um, anyway, for that last clip of the snap ring, <laughs> I kind of made up this little clamp deal, the clamp inside, so I can get some better angles okay now that we got the snap ring in basically our next deal is we're gonna put the collars on we're gonna adjust the tension on the spindle and once we get it set we're gonna spin this collar up what it does is earlier you seen there's two Woodruff keys that anchor this gear to the shaft and this slides over to this collar that slides against that bearing this bearing is not locked inside here it floats and we're going to adjust that to where it goes all the way up against that gear and and then lock it Now this uses the two Woodruff keys, and I already got the other one in, you know, on the opposite side of the one you can see.
Now when setting the load on these bearings, you don't want to overdo it. Uh, you just want to adjust it up to where you got uh, some resistance, where you can feel some resistance on it. Um, of course, if you go too tight, it's just going to run hot. Um, you know, so I just put up a little resistance on it, and then after I run it, you know, then I'll monitor it and make any kind of adjustments. I got the spindle all adjusted. Now I want to pull this up, get it seated all the way over to here. Now this collar, by bringing it, by tightening the collar up, it's taking that gear and it's moving it towards the check end of the spindle and getting rid of any side play that that gear would have. So the gear goes to the right up against the spacer, the bearing, and then up against the big gear just to the right. And then once you get the play out, you know, then you just tighten the set screws up. Okay, all the top shaft is all adjusted. Got the set screw in. Got this adjusted set screw locked in. The only thing left now is put the pins on the shift collar here. Oh. And it goes, they go in here. And here's the wear pads and the pins. Okay. I got the little uh, brass pads for the shifting. Back in. I went ahead and loctited the set screws and staked them. So that is now complete. Everything in the headstock is all back together ready to put the lid on. I also had to pump out and you can see the little uh, filtered screen. That is the only filter that filters the, uh, the oil. Alright, I got the pump back in. I took it apart just to check it out, and it was actually in really nice shape. But the gaskets were all messed up. Somebody had blue silicone. So anyway, I cleared it, cleaned it all off, make a couple new gaskets. But anyway, there's the pump. The pump's right here. 
it pumps oil up through this little line up here to this manifold up here and then through this line and then it comes over to the top and then it feeds this manifold. Since it doesn't have any other uh, filtering system uh, other than that small little felt on the end of the pump, what I got here is just a little diaphragm pump and I got solvent in the headstock and what I'm doing is just flushing everything out and then the pump is sucking that up off the bottom through the filter and then just returning and just trying to get all the debris as possible out so it doesn't go uh, plug up that filter. My goal is to never have to uh, take the cover off of uh, this lathe in my lifetime. Here you can see uh, on the sight glass there's a chip in one side and uh, my good friend Mike that had the donor lathe actually uh, had a nice one and he actually uh, cleaned it up, polished it, made new gaskets and a whole bit. Uh, thank you Mike. Okay, this line here pumps oil to the sight glass. It pumps it over through this line and out right there. Here's the cavity that it fills up. Just a simple little sight glass. Okay, I'm going to manually work the pump. This normally, the cam lobe in here is what works this pump. It just raises it up and down. And I'm just going to take a screwdriver and simulate it. And as you can see, it's pumping just fine.
Here you can see the rubber snubber. This is before I loosen the bolt and turn them a quarter of a turn. But the arm goes up against the rubber and kind of squishes. And then the lever just kind of cams over. And then the rubber just gives it enough cush where it keeps it from uh, rattling. Now one problem I had with that, that set screw right there is a little button head that goes in the shaft. And when you would tighten up that set screw, it would want to pull that shaft out, and pull the handle in, and pinch. And then it would want to hang up. And what they did is they just ran the set screw a little loose. So I had to just go in on the pocket and grind it out a little bit to where I could tighten the set screw up without pinching and uh, binding. Here I'm just making a little lift bracket for a top cover, taking the top cover uh, off and on. Now what worked really nice is all the top bolts are 3 8 bolts and the clearance hole where the bolt drops in was perfect size to just run a tap that is a uh, 7 16 fine thread tap that went in there perfect size wise to hold the top bracket on. I did a more in-depth video um, of just repairing that top hole uh, quite a while back and I just called it the Monarch Lathe putting the lid on uh, if somebody wanted to check it out. Since these set screws are mainly threaded on one side, but a lot of thread engagement, I put the countersink hole in the bottom to keep the tip of the set screw from wanting to walk out right there. Otherwise, when you would go to tighten up the set screw, it would just want to just walk right out and rip out. Where as long as the tip of it's locked in, uh, you got plenty of thread engagement. And then I just used an O-ring to make the seal. Now I mentioned before I have no idea why somebody put the hole in there. Um, terrible place to put the hole. They could have put it between some of the webbing, uh, but they didn't. But anyway, I chose that this repair was more than adequate. Uh, these covers are so thick and heavy. Uh, you know that I'm quite comfortable with with that repair and it gives me something to attach a DRO um, someday on the top of it now with the Loctite there's really no reason to stake it um, but I don't ever plan on taking that slug out and to ever have uh, something like that vibrate out and get between a couple gears uh, would kind of ruin your day
I apologize again for the quality uh, of it. I wasn't aware at the time when I was filming that I had so much wind noise. I tried to edit it uh, down as much as I could. Uh, but anyway, if you've made it this far through the video, uh, I appreciate it uh, very much. And this lathe has been in the shop for a while. It's still waiting for me to uh, put it back on the, the list. Here you can see it's kind of shoved towards the back of the shop. Um, I still need to get the motor back in it. And um, hopefully it won't be long and I can put it to work. Anyway, once again, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to check out the videos. If you like the content, um, thumbs up. If, uh, subscriber, new subscribers are always nice too. Thanks for watching.